there is new evidence that Mars could once have supported life. Mineral deposits show that water once flowed on the surface. NASA scientists look for evidence of water wherever they can find it on Mars. But in the spring of 2008, they may have found it in an unexpected place. The Phoenix lander, newly arrived near Mars' North Pole, has something strange on one of its legs. Some colleagues think that those are water droplets forming in that environment, which is uh, a little curious because it's very cold. Uh, it's not uh, at all obvious that water should be stable there, but it could be really salty, could be briny, and so it has a lower melting point. That's possible. I don't know what the blob of water on the Phoenix lander leg was or the thing that looked like that. Scientists are split, and internet blogs run wild with speculation. But in the end, it's all speculation. The unfortunate thing is, the data that we have are really kind of fuzzy, right at the limit of resolution. You really want to go up there and take a much better picture of it, but it may ultimately be a question that can't be answered. Although the droplets on its leg remain a mystery to this day, when Phoenix's robot arm digs two inches under the Martian surface, it confirms a prediction. As it hits hard, icy soil containing frozen water, Mars Odyssey predicted that Phoenix would land on an icy soil with a little bit of dust on top. Phoenix went, touched it. We got another key part of planetary science, which is getting ground truth. While the Phoenix team expected water ice, they're surprised by something else the lander's laser detects in the Martian sky. Snow. Not carbon dioxide snow, but water crystals, as on Earth. It snows on Mars, which is indeed cool. Phoenix saw it first dissipating high in the atmosphere and eventually actually falling to the surface, and then sublimating and going back to a gas when the sun came back up. It really is one of the first times we're really seeing the, the surface atmosphere water cycle. In this case, gas to solid, solid back to gas. Meanwhile, roving robots explore near the equator. Spirit and Opportunity use high-resolution imaging and spectroscopy to find evidence of minerals and landforms shaped by water in Mars' ancient past. The day in the life of a Mars rover starts as the sun rises and illuminates the, the solar panels, and that wakes up the rover. The radio commands are sent from the Earth to tell it what to do. This time, uh, drive 10 meters forward, and then stop and turn 20 degrees, and then take a panorama with these color filters looking off in that direction. Near the end of the day, one of the NASA orbiters, like the Mars Odyssey orbiter, or the Mars Reconnaissance orbiter, is passing overhead, and we know when that's going to happen. The rover will transmit data from that day up to that orbiter, and then that orbiter relays it back to the Earth. And while it's sleeping, we've got those pictures that it just sent back and other data, and now we're trying to figure out what happened. Did it do what we were expecting it to do? Uh, did it do something unexpected? Is it in some dangerous situation? In early 2008, signals from Spirit indicate trouble. Its right front wheel jams. When the Phoenix team tries driving the rover in reverse, the dragging wheel gouges several inches into the soil and hits silica. On our own planet, where do we find silica? Well, hydrothermal environments. Maybe that's what we're seeing on this other world as well. So a lot of the excitement about silica is because of that, uh, that connection to our own planet. That indicates that, hey, maybe those kinds of environments existed on Mars as well. In fact, the Spirit rover maybe parked at one right now, right next to it, what may have been an ancient Yellowstone-like hotspot. It's a classic accidental discovery and raises the question, could Mars have current underground thermal activity? Is Mars still hot in its interior? It certainly is. There's no way that Mars has completely cooled off all the heat of its accretion, all the heat of its formation. Some of it is still there, plus heat from radioactive elements. There's definitely sufficient heat inside of Mars to make 
hot fluids percolate, but there is that possibility where you might find liquid water at some depth in the crust, yes. In Yellowstone, and at hot springs all over Earth, many different species of bacteria feed and grow in the gas and mineral-rich waters. Could hidden hot springs be breeding grounds for life on Mars? We would love to send electromagnetic sounding instruments to the planet because they could actually tell us whether there is liquid in the crust at some depth. That would be fantastic, then we'd know. While the Spirit team wonders about Mars' underground mysteries, the Phoenix team finds another surprise on the surface. 2% of the soil around the Phoenix lander is composed of perchlorates, combinations of chlorine and oxygen. The discovery of perchlorates on Mars has been fairly controversial because on Earth, it's a very toxic substance. On Earth, perchlorates are used as propellants in fireworks and rockets. This was a surprise. This was a discovery. Why is it even there? How is it forming? The question of perchlorates is a really good question, uh, and uh, it's not a, there's no definitive answer. Perchlorates do occur naturally in places like Chile's Atacama Desert, as ultraviolet radiation from the sun transforms chlorine and oxygen. And on Mars, many of the same kinds of chemical reactions might be happening on the surface. Uh, we don't understand the details of even on the Earth, let alone on Mars. The other challenge with perchlorates is they affect some of the experiments that people use to look for organics for carbon-based molecules like you might find in life. Some scientists are now reconsidering the famous 1976 experiments by the Viking lander. When Viking went to the surface in uh, 1976, they found no evidence whatsoever of organics. One of the recent theories that's being bandied about it is that if you did have perchlorates in the soil, that those might have actually broken down the organics in the same process you were using to try to detect them as you heated the soil up. Perchlorates may have destroyed organic materials in the Viking experiment. And on Earth, they're a key poison in many chemical runoffs. But perchlorates are also power sources for certain bacteria, bacteria actually used to eat toxic wastes. And in terms of life, it's a good news, bad news thing. While microbes might feed on the toxic soil, it could be deadly for humans on Mars. We don't know how that perchlorate compound might be changing the surface. Uh, the surface might be in some kind of a super oxidated state that could ultimately prove to be, for example, corrosive to astronaut suits. One thing is certain. After five months of exploration, Phoenix's mission is threatened by a dust storm sweeping across the Martian plains, burying everything in its path. In a storm so fierce, the Phoenix lander is doomed.